Hi there, and welcome to the first Abu Dhabi Bank Global Investment Outlook for Q1. I'm thrilled to be joined by Chief Economist Simon Ballard. Simon, thanks for joining. Thank you, James. Great to be here with you. Let's get stuck in. So dollar interest rates, where do you see them going this year and how does that growth uh, compare to those of European and British rates? Great question. I think that is the, the key aspect, the key question among fund investors' minds as we look for 2022 and, uh, and beyond into 2023. It's the transition from a monetary easing to a monetary tightening policy that I think is driving sentiment in the early days of this uh, 2022. The market thus far has been looking for an aggressive shift from lo low zero interest rate policy from the Federal Reserve to the first tightening of interest rates by the FOMC and then possibly further on the market at the moment, pricing in four rate increases by the end of 2022. We would suggest that there's probably more likely as inflation pressures recede as Omicron and COVID-19 concerns recede, that there'll be a, more, a, a less hawkish uh, expectation for rates over the remainder of the year. So generally rates are going higher, I think led by the Fed, probably not as hawkishly as uh, many in the market uh, currently are pricing in, but certainly one or two is our base case scenario uh, for hikes between now and the end of the year. As far as that sits with developed markets, again, we'll be looking at a similar trend in terms of a transition from easing towards tightening. The, uh, the, the Bank of England already has kicked off its tightening cycle with a 25 basis point increase and there are several more, two or three more, being priced into the market between now and the end of the year. Again, chasing global inflation pressures, which one might suggest could still be transitory uh, or not necessarily addressed by tighter monetary policy. That in itself is a whole different debate. But a couple of more interest rate cre increases coming from the Bank of England. The ECB facing a much more diverse uh, complex, if you wish, mixture of, of economic fundamentals across the Eurozone is probably unlikely to move interest rates much before 2023. But generally yields will be rising, curves should be re-steepening after the current flattening, I'm talking yield curves, government bond yield curves, should be re-steepening by the end of the year as we start to factor in that sort of tighter monetary policy and the reflation story. Okay. And what key factors do you think are going to be driving growth for the Middle East region in the year 2022? Of course, the reopening of the global economy is key to uh, the diversification story, to the leisure, the hospitality, the retail industry here. Um, that alongside, of course, as always, oil prices and with oil prices trending higher and probably expected to, to, to edge higher or, or, or remain around these sort of levels throughout the coming months, that's going to be a very strong positive in terms of government revenues um, and sustainability of sovereign balance sheets um, and credit ratings. So growth in general here, we're, we're counting on continued reopening of the global economy, tourism, the relaxation, if you wish, of restrictions around travel associated with COVID as the vaccination program engulfs the, uh, or, or, or covers the, you know, much, of the, uh, much of the globe. So we're gonna have a, 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 a more positive outlook on, uh, on the virus or a less, uh, I should say, a less impactful um, effect from the virus. And that's gonna be driving growth here in the MENA region um, as we get back to some form of normal economic activity uh, after the recession and the, and the dampening impact that we've had over the last two years. Okay, so we spoke about MENA, so focusing more on the UAE, what's your view on the UAE economy for this year? Because there's been a spate of new reforms, economic programs to reinvigorate the economy. What's the, what's the word in the street? What's the sentiment? Okay, well, we're gonna go from, let's put it into context of 2020. We had minus 6% GDP growth in the UAE, minus 4% GDP growth in, uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. So we had in, in general a 5% recession across the, uh, the GCC states. We're gonna go from there to a rebound into positive real GDP growth this year. We're looking for something around 3.2% real GDP growth in the UAE, 3.0% real GDP growth in, uh, in KSA, and then we're gonna go to 4.8 and 4.6% respectively. That's going to be driven, as you say, by reforms at the government level, the reopening of the global economy, strong oil prices, uh, consumers and, 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 and the leisure industry starting to pick itself up off, its, uh, off, off the floor again after being decimated for the last couple of years. Generally, the diversification story here within the economy is looking more optimistic, it's looking more positive, but I think we need to look at it in the context of where we've come from and where we're going. We need to be sort of cognizant of the challenges that still lie that out, out there in terms of ongoing and new variants from, from COVID, which may just limit a little bit um, expectations for optimism uh, going forward. We are optimistic, but I think we need to sort of just uh, rein in our expectations to the extent that we're not disappointed if we don't quite you know, follow a V-shaped recovery. I'm suggesting that albeit sharply from minus five to, to plus three, say, and then to four and a half, um, we're, we're looking at more of a U-shaped recovery. And I think that is gonna to prove to be more sustainable over the medium to long term. 
than trying to chase something more aggressive in the short term that isn't as sustainable. Mm. You speak about optimism, so with rising interest rates, what does that mean for the fixed income markets within the Middle East? Well, as far as you know, that, that floating rate liability um, is concerned, if we're right and if while the front end remains fairly well anchored, um, albeit that we've had the, uh, you know, the bear flattening recently with the sell-off in anticipation of the, uh, the Fed moving to that first tightening move, um, generally, I think the rising rate environment through reflation at the back end of the curve, it's an, it's an interesting opportune moment now to look at hedging potential um, from an issuance perspective, you know, pre-funding, uh, getting, uh, getting debt away uh, before rates rise over the second half of this year, perhaps and into 2023. Um, and from an investor's perspective, I think, you know, the incremental the yield that you get over, say, US Treasuries for a solid AA rating here in the UAE and the solid single A rating you get around much of the rest of the GCC space, you know, is, is still going to be the jewel in the crown from an investment perspective uh, going forward. So, you know, equity markets, fixed income markets here, I think are going to continue to see the, the upside potential to investing in, this, in the MENA region, particularly within the GCC. Simon, what are the key risks that we haven't actually covered then, being a bit cheeky in the last question, what are the key risks that we haven't covered that you foresee maybe happening this year? I guess the key risk really at this stage seems to be inflation. If inflation isn't as transitory um, or as temporary as, as, we, as we believe it should be, and it doesn't continue to fade, or it doesn't begin to fade, because it probably hasn't peaked yet um, in January of 2022, um, but if it doesn't fade in the latter half of the year and we get a more hawkish uh, rhetoric being maintained by key central banks, the Fed, the Bank of England, and indeed perhaps the ECB, then that would obviously spook the markets into a more negative mindset. Um, obviously on the geopolitical front, we're watching what goes on you know, around, the, around the world in different, be it sort of you know, in, in the Russias and Ukraines of the world as well as, as here, um, and politics as well. We've got elections coming up in Europe, so we're looking at you know, what happens in France. We've got a political situation which is very fluid, shall we say, it seems to be in the UK at the moment, um, and Mr Biden as well, um, obviously politics there uh, never far from the uh, never far from the headline so politics geopolitics but most importantly I believe it's inflation our expectation that it will recede in the second half of the year if that's wrong and our, uh, our, our rates outlook becomes more hawkish then that would uh, that would change the outlook completely wonderful Simon Ballard always very intriguing always great to have you many thanks take care James thank you so thank much. you thank you